So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Life, Better Business. Today I'm joined by the amazing John Mabry, who is a presentation coach from johnmabry.com. And John and I actually have actually worked together over the last two or three years doing a lot of video stuff together. But today he's here as one of our experts to talk about going from good to great, getting the best out of people. So welcome, John. Lovely to have you. Deborah Chantry Taylor, always a pleasure to be in your company. Oh, thank you very much. Same here. Um, so before we get started, John, we always like to ask our guests to share professional and personal best, just to give the the, the listeners, viewers, um, a, a bit of an insight into the, the man behind John Mabry. Very true. Okay. Well, uh, let's start with the uh, let's start with the personal. I think for me, uh, growing up uh, with a with a father and a grandfather. Uh, as broadcasters, entertainers, etc. I remember I was about nine years of age, and I and I, I just I had this stutter. I had this lack of confidence, and I had a desire to work in radio, uh, but I had this thing. I was like, you know, you can imagine it, lining up at the at the tuck shop at school, and you you, you plan out everything you wanted to say. And I, 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 I'm going to have a meat pie and a donut. And I get up to the front of the queue and all these pu- 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 pubescent boys are all around you. And I go, can I? Oh, it was so embarrassing. It was so embarrassing. I just wanted to you know, run for the hills. Yeah. But I remember, you know, I, I knew that I wanted to have, I had that goal in mind and I knew that I needed to do some work, you mm-hmm. know, if you want to get past stuff. So, Speech and drama. I remember going to a lovely lady called Meredith Casley in Forest Hill in uh, in uh, Milford Takapuna, and I remember this this book called Rhymes with Reasons. And you you, you had to overemphasize it. You had to like you know uh, um, um, open your mouth when you speak. And Kiwi's not particularly good with that, are they? And it's like father's car is a Jaguar, and he drives <laughs> rather fast. Arthur's cart is far less smart and can't go half as far. But I would rather drive in my papa's fast car than Arthur's cart. And you would record that at the start of a term. And then you would listen back to the recording and you'd do it again three months later. And just the marked improvement that you would have in the sound of your voice, all, the, all these. But that was, good, that was wow. 19, 1982. And I still remember that rhyme with reason. So I did overcome my stutter through. Uh, doing some work in speech and drama and speech speech lessons, that sort of thing, and then working uh, in stagecraft. And I loved that theatre of just that confidence and being in front of people. And it was just, um, it was a, it was a joy. That's the that's the personal. That's the short yeah. version. Yeah. The professional one, uh, as I said, I mentioned at the start that my uh, father was in broadcasting. You know, it's always that that joy, the love that you have for your parents. You you know, I probably put dad on a pedestal, probably too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when an opportunity came around to work with him in a professional capacity on the radio uh, is that uh, we created New Zealand's first father and son radio show, uh, first, first father and son commercial radio station, wow. or radio show, uh, which was, which was great, you know, and I was, I was probably a little bit too rigid and dad was kind of the funny guy. And I remember being on the, being on the radio and he'd say, dad, uh, uh, John, I'm just. I just need to go to the. I just need to go to the toilet. I'll be back on a couple of shakes. And um, <laughs> dad jokes. Yeah, okay. uh, dad jokes. You know, and I. I was kind of like, Dad, we need to be serious. And and I'm looking back, and I, it was it was wonderful. It was a wonderful experience. You know, a little bit of PR, a little bit of a uh, bit of story about it. But what's interesting is is that his father and dad created the first radio show, non-commercial. Back in 1950, must have been about 1954, when Dad was at 2SM in Sydney and uh, Jack Mabry was uh, doing the Lever Hit Parade, all those kind of things in um, something like that. Anyway, I'm not sure who was where, but uh, yeah, I think Dad was at 2SM and they did a little radio show uh, and Jack kind of called the shots. But uh, it was, again, just a lovely moment to kind of work with family. And they say, don't work with your family or kids or animals. (laughs) But yeah, you just need to have really draw the line. So from a professional sense, that was a joy to work with my father. Yeah. And so he was also John Mabry, right? Because you're John uh, Jr. Well, look, you know, he he was a he's a he's a John Ernesto Mabry. So we don't have we don't uh, we, we have different middle names. I'm a John Gerard. Uh, so yeah, but I'm a John Jr. Uh, and it's kind of stuck, you know, the same friends that I went to school with uh, back in the back in the eighties still call me Junior, you know, or Scooter because I was reasonably quite quick. 
uh, but Scooter or, uh, yes, Junior or Junes. So there you go. There's some. Um, the the uh, two stories. Thank you very much for sharing. So welcome. what do you do now, John? What do I do now? Look, I feel it's been a bit of a journey. And isn't, isn't being in business about the enjoying the journey from where you you know, started to where you are now. And that's both financially and um, professionally and obviously doing work that you enjoy doing. And for me, you know, as a, as a coach, I want to help people be better uh, or to go from good to great in presentation. I started in the, in the video space and I was really niche in terms of people who did talking head video on LinkedIn uh, for their business. And I still do that. Uh, but I realized that in New Zealand, niching is probably not really a thing. I mean, I remember talking to somebody in, uh, about three weeks ago and I said, what's your niche? And they said, SMEs. And I went, mm, I think that's, uh, that's all of New Zealand businesses bar the top two, the top, top, you know, blue chips. So, uh, you know, for me, I was very tight in my niche. Uh, there's only a certain number of people that are going to get on, get on a camera for their business. Uh, so I've just kind of um, broadened my, 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 my appeal a little bit uh, and helping, you know, small businesses start using video, whether that's on your phone, uh, but I will still work with clients across a capacity of helping them shoot them on, shoot them on, on, on video, but using a videographer yep. and, uh, and just really getting, getting the best out of them. But it's also extending out to helping people do some podcast training. And uh, we've, we've obviously talked about that in your little lovely podcast studio. Uh, and also helping people pitch more effectively and deliver their, um, when they go to you know, lots of small business owners, go to networking events like BNI and and TNG and that sort of stuff. Uh, and they're normally quite boring when they stand up to deliver their 60 second pitch or deliver their 10 minute presentation. Yep. So I help them across their, their content and their, and their, and their, and their ideation uh, and some creative theming, but also some simple tips in how to present uh, or use their voice more effectively, their body language, not going into too much, um, too much detail, because we just want people to be authentic, right? Yeah. And I think, um, I mean, I sort of tend to forget because like you, I've also had training and acting and whatnot. And so I, I feel reasonably comfortable kind of being in front of a camera, although you've seen the worst side of me as well. I'm going, I can't do this. Like I get this right. Um, but for a lot of people, they may never have done that. And so it must be incredibly scary to think about putting yourself out there on video. Um, when people come to you, what's their usual fears, their concerns? What do they come to you with? Yeah, I'm scared shitless. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what, what will people think of me? Uh, what if I, what if they see that, you know, I'm an imposter? Uh, what if you see that, you know, I've got yellow teeth? I, I mean, I use that example. It's like, I still look at myself and then go, Oh, John, I wish you'd take, take more care of your teeth as a, you know, as a, as a youngster, yeah. uh, because we see all those things, but mm -hmm. no one else sees it. They just see, Oh, there's John. Yeah. And so it's, it's those inner fears of, putting yourself out there. It's also a little bit tall, tall poppy syndrome comes into play. I don't want to be too big. I kind of need to do something, mm -hmm. but yes, yeah, so all those usual fears. And then there's, you know, uh, thank goodness John's doing this because he's going to do the editing for me, or, you know, he's going to do the lighting for me or, um, but there's, um, yeah, there's so many fears But typically it starts with uh, being confident in who you're being um and um and th that i'm gonna say the right thing and not piss people off you know because i think there's a lot of people oh i can't say that i couldn't possibly comment on that post on linkedin because what if other people saw that and that i would have an opinion what does that say about how confident people are in themselves yeah and so why why do people want to put themselves out there why would you recommend people do well ultimately I'm doing it from a business perspective. I don't want to help people, you know, be a influencer on Instagram. You know, it's, and I think that it really comes back to my why is, uh, you know, having worked in bigger advertising or marketing agencies, you never really get to make a difference. You never really get to move the needle, as I say. Um, so working with small business owners, um, you can see an instant transformation when they, see that they've got some confidence or they've, you know, they get some feedback from people uh, there, their inner circle or family, friends, or people that already know them and go, Deborah, you were really good in that video. And you're like, was I? And for me, it's, it's, you can see it. And it's, that's just, you know, for you as a, uh, as a, 
as a, as a coach, you want to see them go that aha moment to get them to hear. And, uh, and there's just so much confidence in them themselves and their, and their business moving forward. And so, you know, for me, it's just seeing that aha moment and seeing them go, Oh, wow. So I'm really confident. And then it's, Oh my God, I got two phone calls from prospects saying, can we catch up for coffee? And I'm like, I know, right? Yeah. So and I suppose the thing about video and, and podcasts and all that sort of stuff is it, it's got a lot more power, hasn't it, than just putting out a well-crafted post on LinkedIn or a pretty picture with some accompanying text. What is it about video and podcasts that you think um, gets that engagement? Well, the, it's, unless you're a skilled writer, uh, video and po- video particularly, we can see your emotion. We can see your passion. Whereas you need to be pretty damn good at writing uh, a post uh, to be able to craft a great message to describe a feeling. Uh, we can see that feeling and we just, we just automatically default to, oh, I trust you. Or, or, or you know, you, you, you are someone of value. Yeah. And I think it's important to, you know, video first for, for that, you know, I'm, I'm telling a, a humorous story or I'm uh, sharing a, a great piece of value about uh, how I can help you uh, in my business or, um, or even from a, from, a, from, a, from a podcast delivering your asking relevant questions to an audience or to, to, to your guest, your people listening goes, well, he actually knows his stuff, doesn't he? So that's where I think it's about building authority. Yeah. ultimately it's no like trust so people need to know you first of all before they're going to even consider liking you and then they've got to work out are you a person of value are you a person that i can trust that i can work with so if the objective is to get to trust is to build that authority to get to trust and then people will do business with you right yeah okay perfect and so what about people who kind of go but i haven't got anything to say you know i'm in the business of xyz there's not really much i can say how how would you deal with that yeah, and I think that was kind of the first thing that uh, when I started doing um, video of myself was what am I going to talk about? What um, what are those pains, problems, philosophy, and proof that you know? Because ultimately, that's it. Yeah, you know, I think I might have stolen that from James Kemp. Thanks, James. <laughs> Is that um, you know we need to talk about the pains or problems that our prospects are facing. Uh, and then we need to talk about ourselves because ultimately we are the people that they buy. Mm. And then we need to demonstrate some proof. So uh, pains problems, uh, which is typically educational content. And what I've kind of worked out is, I guess, a script framework. And this is probably where a lot of presentation coaches don't go down that pathway. They, they just say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on just uh, how you deliver it. Mm-hmm. But when you're on LinkedIn or Facebook, uh, or, or even any social media channel, it's always the first problem. What am I going to talk about? It's cool. Well, I'll give you, you know, what you're going to talk about. You're going to talk about the pains and problems that your prospects are facing. Yeah. And here's an actual script framework that works, that's succinct, that you can apply your IP across. Um, and then you just rinse and repeat and talk about all those other pains and problems. So uh, that's that's what people need to talk about. Um, and I think it's important. I mean, I've obviously sat in one of your workshops and in that room, there were a whole bunch of people from all different backgrounds. Um, so people think, oh, well, it's only really coaches, consultants who've got anything interesting to say. But when we had people who were product producers, we had people who were uh, builders, we had people who were technical people, all walks of life. And yet every single one of them could actually use that framework to come up with something that um, created that trust. Because you're absolutely right. I think one of the things I've learned is that people listen to you, see you, and then when they meet you, they feel like they already know you, which actually takes down a great big barrier um, from, you know, that first contact point. I think uh, uh, your great friend, Sarah Lockheed, Lockheed McMillan said yeah. she was in Mitre 10 out in Waiuku and someone came and said, oh my God, hi, Sarah, how are you? And Sarah turns around and like, um, I don't know you. So I've seen all of your videos on LinkedIn. Thank yeah. you so much. I'm really enjoying the content. You know, often we don't get to see that in an online space, but you become a little bit of a celebrity. Yeah. You, you become a little bit of, and look, at the end of the day, if it's about being noticed, you know, even if you don't have anything to sell, that's where I guess you become an influencer, isn't it? You know, if you've got, um, if you're showing up for your audience, building your audience over time, then, um, you know, you build that likability. 
Yeah, but if we use Sarah as an example, I mean, she was very much giving a lot of value in all of her little uh, LinkedIn videos she was doing. And so that person wouldn't have watched them all if there hadn't been some value in there for them. And I think that's what it comes down to. It's not about being an influencer per se, but if you can offer value to the people that you're dealing with. Um, and I think, it, it, yeah, it's really interesting, is it? Because people think that if I post something on LinkedIn, if I don't get lots of likes and lots of comments and it's not effective. And I know this to be completely untrue because I've got some people who I've never seen them like a comment of my, or like a post of mine, mm. if a comment on anything I've done. And then when I finally get to meet with them so many years later, they go, oh, I've been following you avidly, you know, on LinkedIn. It's like, really? I, you, you've never commented. You've never liked it. No, no, but I really thought I love what you do. <laughs> yeah. All those, all those, all those ones, Deborah, where, you know, I've been watching you for six yes. months. And then, and then literally, though, you know, I, I mean, I love that stat, you know, I always talk about 80% of people on LinkedIn do nothing, 15% like and comment, 4% create content, 1% do video. So there's a lot of people watching your content. Yeah. And even though, you know, a lot of content creators look at the, the number of likes or the number of comments and go, well, it's not working. Oh, no, it is working. It does work. So, and you've got to, I think you, there's a, you know, I, I've really honed my skills around, uh, around LinkedIn. Because you've you've got to you've got to know how to leverage your content and 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 reach out to 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 to, to first degree secondary connections and and really invest in LinkedIn as a platform because you need to build relationships and um uh, you know I'm I'm blessed that you know, anyone who works with me I give them that LinkedIn training because they've it's it's absolute gold yeah. No, it's absolutely true. And I think it's it's opened up a whole lot of new opportunities, particularly with the lockdowns and things with COVID. You know, I've actually made some really great friends now through LinkedIn who perhaps I wouldn't have ever got to meet in real life. I mean, I was talking to a guy the other day who's actually an ex-clown who now helps people discover what their passion is in life. Now he's over in the, I think in the Netherlands. And I was yeah. like, you know, I never would have met that person if it wasn't for LinkedIn. And uh, we had a great conversation online. We're keeping in contact now. Who knows? It may never lead to anything, but it doesn't matter. We've got a great relationship and it's, it's been really beneficial with both of us so yeah yeah and i think i, I literally just had just some linkedin training before before um seeing you here and you know there's a lot of people who are who, who just don't don't get linkedin yeah uh, but there's just so many you know I th we've still got to remember it's social media yeah. it's not sales media and yet yeah. linkedin is about business but you can still share personal things i'm like, okay maybe not dogs and and, and babies what's wrong with Unless, dogs uh, oh oh that's right the dog <laughs> I'm talking Watch to Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> so long as the yeah, I, ideally that there's some relevance to you. I mean, you yeah. you always post about your dog, so oh, that's fine. Oh, now I'm gone bright red, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so long as there's 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 relevance to uh, to what you deliver or what you do. Hey, look. To be honest, I I kind of view it as being authentic, you know, because I at the end of the day, if I didn't post about my dogs on LinkedIn, then actually I wouldn't be being true because you know how obsessed I am with them. They absolutely. are absolutely part of my life. So yeah, yeah that's okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll forgive you that one. <laughs> so you know, in in terms of getting started, where do people get started with this stuff? What are the, what could they do if they if they even just got an inkling of a, a, a oh, I probably should do something about this? What would you suggest? Well, look, you know, I think there's a, there's a number a number of fears that you need to get past even before you, you know, work with a videographer or uh, do some work with me is, you know, you've got one of these, you've got a, you've got a mobile phone. And I think that really good example of how you can uh, just almost be with the camera. And it's, it's, it's the same thing. I remember doing uh, some MC training for a, a guy who was going over to Nigeria when we could go to Nigeria and how do you, how do you, you know, you, you're on a stage with an audience. If you haven't been there before, the first thing is you just you need to go and be with your audience. Yeah. Um, and when you're on video, you just need to be with the camera and just, you know, uh, there's a really great exercise of literally just, you know, I'm, 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 I'm on a webcam and I'm looking at the camera of just don't talk, just be with the camera and look at them. Yeah. And, and, you know, just have it be part of you. Yeah. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can record a video on your phone and just do it selfie style and do like a 20, 30 second video uh, every single day for 30 days, 30 day challenge. And, you, you know, people say, oh, well, what do I talk about? It's like, what did you have for dinner last night? What did your kids do at school today? What do you, you know, who did you see on the bus? Uh, you know, talk about your favorite things. It's not about the what. Mm -hmm. It's about the experience of pressing that record button, talking to the camera for 30 seconds about your thing. And then once you've recorded it, 
you don't watch it. Oh, really? Okay. You don't watch, Why you is don't, that? Don't watch any of them for 30 days. Ah, okay. What we're trying to do here is we're going to look back at all your, at, obviously after 30 days, you're going to go back one through to 30. What we're trying to see is that you feeling more and more comfortable with being on camera, yep. of being looking at yourself back. And of course, we're still going to go, oh my God, oh my God, I don't look so great. But what we want to just get you some practice of being on the camera talking feeling comfortable talking about how you're going to start how you're going to end what is your point um and you know it's a really great tool to have you be a little bit more comfortable so there's there's a couple of things even before you go and you know post something and yeah. you know i probably the the same with um uh, i mean podcast is a little bit different um i think that the, the key thing with podcasting particularly for business is that most people uh, don't don't use these things mm -hmm. when you're you know it's like when you're listening we, we, when you're leading a podcast, you've got to use these things. You've got to have a guide or some idea of the questions that you're going to ask. But if you're focusing on the next question, you're not listening to their response. And that's where the gold is, you know? Yeah. So, um, and yeah, so there's um, the key thing is just really being with people. Um, it's always sorry, be, being, being with people on a stage. Uh, and uh, if you, if you don't have a stage or a, or, or an audience to practice with, go and stand in the, again when we're in level one uh is go and stand in the middle of queen street uh at 12 30 facing people walking towards you and look at their eyes yeah. not going to get arrested for that for being a bit creepy <laughs> no all, all you're doing is all you're doing is you're being feeling comfortable yep with people looking at you going is he just standing in the middle of queen street or the middle of the middle, middle of the footpath looking at people as you as as they're walking past you and it's yeah, it's a great little exercise. You're lucky you can not do. throw you a coin too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're not you're not entertaining. You're not smiling. Your hands hands beside you. It's just okay. letting that those fears of people looking at you yep. come to the surface. Mm. It's interesting. We've been doing a lot of stuff over Zoom, obviously, at the moment with what's going on. And there is a real thing called Zoom fatigue, isn't it, where you're looking at yourself all day long and you just get absolutely exhausted by it. How do you think people can kind of overcome that? Because being on Zoom is different to doing videos, isn't it? Well, it, for me, I, it's, a, it's again, it's another great place to rehearse doing videos uh, rather than thinking, oh, I need all the gear and the podcast, sorry, the, the, the tripod and microphone stuff. It's already there. It's, uh, you know, go on to Zoom and record yourself doing a video by looking at the camera. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to send it, but it's just it's another way to, to kind of practice. Yeah, Zoom, 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 Zoom fatigue. Um, goodness. I haven't even considered uh, probably because I love it. <laughs> I love it. The fact that there's no traffic. My, my, I think my, um, my uh, WAF arrived from a car. So my, my little scooter, my, my little registration six yes. weeks ago. Well, I haven't even put it on my bike because I, I don't need to go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, for me, I quite like working from home and uh, I'm kind of being with people and you, you can get so much more done. Um, but yeah, I get it. It's, um, just don't just don't ramble just try and keep it really tight okay one of the things i made a little note of here and i just wanted to share is that sometimes you still feel like the stuff that you're sharing isn't revolutionary and so therefore it's not going to be useful for people but it doesn't have to be does it no look i think you know a lot of people come to me in the sort of there's not a lot of huge presentation coaching going on when people are doing video for the first time if you know if you're I, I work with more start pe people novices and you know we don't need to pull out lots of great tips for them because all we want them to be is authentic yeah we just want you to be yourself and then you build the confidence and you know i've had clients work with me for for a year and they don't come to me and say okay john i've got the confidence now how do i how do i be better and then we can go into okay we can talk about pausing or pitch or pace or using gestures um, um, yeah, there's, there's lots of things that we can obviously advance you through, but for most people starting on video, I just want you to be authentic and, and, uh, that, that, that you're exactly the same, whether you're on camera or you're talking to your best friend in a cafe, we just want you to be authentic.
And I think that's what, you know, as a, as a presentation coach, that's where you really add value. I think that the, I know when I first started doing video, I was just so nervous about, you know, what do I say? Do I say it right? And I think because of all the other communications that I do, I am quite, let's say, German about making sure that they're absolutely perfect, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. And so video didn't seem to have that opportunity. And, and I think what you did as a coach was you just relaxed me and you just said, you just need to be yourself. And that's that's what you don't get when you do it on your own. Because if you're no. trying to do it on your own, you, you are literally, I mean, I remember recording some videos myself and just, yeah, trying so hard to get it perfect that it became, it became scripted, it became forced, it became I'm just re- repeating things rather than actually being who yeah. I am. So yeah, look, yeah. I, you know, I would I would much rather teach people to do a video without a script. My my preference is you don't want to you don't want to have the script because you lose all the emotion. We we, mm. we 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 people put on a reading voice. Hello there, my name is Deborah Joy. Like you're like you're like you're reading the news, and, yeah. and you just kind of being disconnected from your words because they're just words. So uh, I, I always teach people to, you know, um, deliver it free form. Yep. And you've got to also got to remember, you don't have to get it perfect. You, 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 we just want you to, some, I think those are some of the most engaging videos on LinkedIn or Facebook is when someone is just authentic and just shares from here, not thinking about what's going up here. They're just sharing from here. Yep. And people go, oh, that was so good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think it's... Um, uh, but eventually you get to the stage where you're going to do a, 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 a I don't know, a, a, a 10 minute sales video. It's about the words, getting the words right. So we can teach you around how do we tell a story while reading an auto cue, but have it not being sound that it's, that, that, that it's being read. Yeah, no, fair enough. I was just thinking too, it's sort of, um, it's like, yeah, it's good. It, I think sometimes the videos that have the little um, mistakes in them, and I, and I see it on my podcast yeah. sometimes, do I lose my words and I can't say something? But it's like, actually, that's what we're like in real life too, right? So there's nothing wrong with actually having little mistakes in there. You don't have to cut them out. But also what I was going to say is I think that sometimes even just sharing things that everybody else sort of knows, it gives people a sense of, oh, that happened to them too. That's so good. I wondered if it was just me. And so again, with that sort of building of trust, it just means that people kind of go, okay, that wasn't revolutionary. It wasn't something amazing. It wasn't rocket, you know, it wasn't rocket science, but oh, wow, that, that there's somebody else going through the same thing that I am. I was talking to on my uh, live show pod, um, podcast, Robert Scott of, uh, of the Breeds. And I kind of said, what, what, what does it take to create a great show? Yeah. And he said, you know, John, you know, just talk about the stuff that everybody relates to. Yeah. He said he did a he did a, a show about whistling. Yeah, and it was just, it was about whistling. <laughs> and you know, I we were talking about people doing polls on 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 LinkedIn and somebody I think it was I can't remember who it was. Uh, but it was, you know, it was no fancy headline. It was like, do you use Instagram? I think it was like it was Tom, Tom Broxham. Yeah. And Tom said, you know, do you use the, do, do you use Instagram? Yes, no. And it's just like everyone knows of Instagram, so it's really easy to vote. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no thinking involved. So, and you know, I was watching a video of the of the great um, uh, Jason Gunn, uh, who is just remarkable to watch. You know, we could all have his ability to sort of tell a story, but I think uh, you've got to remember that from a video video perspective, you're just talking to one person. You're not talking to this huge big audience. So, I'm just talking to you now. And like we would do with a glass of wine <laughs> what, or a cup of coffee, but yes, preferably a glass of wine. And that's right. And that's, we just want you to be you having a conversation because we, it's not this, hello there, my name is John Mabry. And I'm a, you know, people don't talk like that. And, and the same goes for a podcast. And really there's a few changes when speaking to public, but largely we just want you to be you. And uh, without that, um, and even, you know, um, when normally when you're on a video camera, you know, when you're looking at somebody or talking to them, you don't look, look at them like this the entire time. It's like, we'd look around, we'd look up and we come back to you. We look at your face. We look at the, what, what what's behind you. Yeah. So the, the same, the same look at the elephant. I know. Um, the tricky thing with the, with the, with the zoom thing is I, what I've been trying to do all the way through this podcast is look at the camera. Cause that's where you or the audience is but really I can see you peripherally you're down there or one. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. I otherwise yeah. when you, when you, when, when you're doing a video on zoom, it just, everyone's looking that way, you know, they're looking down there and well, I want to look at your eyes and see, you know, you being believable. Yep. 
Perfect. Hey, John, um, always great as always to chat to you. I just want to, before we finish up, could you give me three tips that we could give to the listeners about how they could start their journey in going from good to great? Well, the first one would just be to, 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 to start. You yes. know, I hear, I hear everybody just says, you know, oh, I think I'll be ready next month. You know, we, we, we all procrastinate. Right. We all procrastinate. Get out your mobile phone, record a video of yourself and post it on LinkedIn. Just do it. Yep. Uh, the next one is if we're doing business, if we're doing business videos, we can still share personal information about ourselves because ultimately people buy us first. Uh, I think the natural default to people uh, is they want to educate and show their value. And that's true. We need to do that. But, um, you know, my, my favorite video is, you know, tell me three things about you that your audience doesn't know. And it just, it, it's just sheer personal stuff. Exactly what, what we talked about before about being relatable. Yeah. And the last just one just is- Just to interrupt there. We actually do that um, in our EOS meetings as well. Every EOS meeting we actually held with the team. We always get them to share a personal and professional best because you yeah. actually learn some, fa- every week you learn something fascinating about one of your team members. And it just gets more trust going, which is really important. Yeah, sorry. It's to interrupt. Having, no, absolutely. It's about having a deeper connection with fellow human beings, not just selling stuff. Yeah. Uh, the last one is uh, probably the my biggest lesson from my radio days and applying that to video is less is more. Most people, when they go out and they want to do a video, it's like, okay, I'm going to do a video. And there's you know, there's so many things to get ready, right? You've got to have the, the lighting and the camera and the, you've got a nice, you've got hair and makeup and then you, you've got to get the lighting out and the camera and the microphone, get it all set up. It's like, oh my God, I want to get my values worth. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to mention like 10 things rather than one. And then it, the I've video, never done that. No, <laughs> no, no. The video doesn't work. Yeah. And they go, oh, well, video didn't work. It's like, no, you just talk about one thing, what's in it for the audience, and finish. And then do another nine videos for the other nine things. Yeah, that's absolutely perfect. And look, I know that you have a, like an introductory course people can actually do to get themselves into this, don't they? Where would, where would they find out about that, John? You can go to johnmaybury.com forward slash unmissable. So I have a little thing where I show you how to use a uh, video on your phone. Uh, you get all the coaching, the scripting, uh, the finishing, all the all the all, all the editing. Uh, lots of value in that. It's um, okay, johnmaybury.com, and it's unmissable. You as a product, and it's a great way to you know kind of step your toe and into uh, doing some video um, for your business. Fantastic, and I assume they can also get hold of you through that site as well. If they, I, I'm on I'm on LinkedIn, yeah, and you just send me a message and yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not really even on Messenger. I am on Messenger, but if people want to get in touch with me, um, connect with me on LinkedIn. That's yeah. the that's the place to find me, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's, cool. that's how I found you. Oh, that's true. Yeah, okay. Well, um, I know that you're not very fond of getting out and about at the moment. And you're quite happy in your little unit yeah. there, but I have to say, I am looking forward to seeing you in person again. I hopefully, am. sometime soon. So a wine soon, absolutely. A yeah. wine soon. That would be fantastic. Mind hey, you, we could we we could go for a socially distanced walk. Are we are we, oh. are we allowed to do that? I think we can, yes. Uh, I spe- well, I think, yeah. As long Let's as just wait till next week. Yeah, well, next week should be fine. Okay, great. Well, look, thanks again for your time, for all your tips and all your stories. Really appreciate it. I uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, Deborah.